and welcome everybody to the Brain Gym on the Awake Radio Network. We have a uh, good panel today. We have Tracy Kennedy from Turtle Island News dot info. We also have Barbara Three Crow from Turtle Talk, and we have our resident lurker, of course, Holy Walker, who is uh, joining us for the interim because he's always taking a dip uh, in the pool off his log so but we have him here and uh, I don't know exactly what all we're going to talk about today but I do have one topic that I think uh, is is worth discussing today and that is the ongoing uh, explosions that are happening in China I think it's very interesting you know the first one we thought well you know uh, bad accident The second one we thought, hmm, that's kind of odd that you're going to have two chemical plant explosions. And now we have a third. I don't think we can chalk that one up to Coinky Dink. Uh, But I I wanted to talk about this a little bit. And that's why I asked Tracy on today. Because uh, if you want to know what's going on in the world, she's your go-to girl. And I always check with her when I want to know something because she's always on top of it and she probably has the articles already posted up on her website at turtleislandnews.info so you could probably go over there and check and you could still listen to the broadcast because she does have the awake player over there if you wanted to check that out but Tracy I mean come on three explosions really uh, and these are all just kawinky dinks that uh, oh they just kind of sloughed off on, on the regulations and, and the safety and uh, all three of them went boom is that possible do you think um, no it's not possible And when I first at the first one I was already calling foul because too many things happened just before this event but the Rizo port last month's explosion in China I have a picture of that, you know, just over a week after the powerful explosion that killed between 114, injured more than 700. In that Chinese port of Tianjin, one month since Chinese authorities had to seed the clouds to make rain, help put out the massive fire. But again, I'm going to tell you things that we can actually prove. The white substance that fell on the ground was not cyanide. These people have been working with cash. They have signed the International Peace Treaty. This is what cash calls the CO2 GANs. I have the articles on my page proving what this is. They are heavily under attack, like the majority of of the world right now, who has said no to the United States and Britain and their minions, of course. They're being attacked with cyanide. Cyanide is, again, an ancient Roman weapon. It's cyanide made from apple, of course, apple seeds, which is, again, talking about destroying DNA. This, and I'll go into it in incredible detail on my show, but... These things are not an accident. When I was telling you about what happened before, because there was four incredibly large explosions before these two, in China and Russia, disturbing coincidences that all smack of sabotage and exactly mirrors the days leading up to World War I. The other thing that's going on this year is the Tetrad. The Tetrad is important, it's because of the moons, the blood moons. These moons, this is going back to a prophecy of Colombo. Colombo, Columbus, who actually said what was going to happen here on Turtle Island, in his second voyage, and you can look up of the prophecies Columbus, depending on how it's written, but it specifically said that the making of the new Jerusalem 
which is here, by the way, not in the Middle East. The making of the new Jerusalem will trigger world events that will eventually lead, during one of these events, to first a creation of what they will call Israel in the Middle East, then a creation of a one-world emperor, and the end of the Jewish people, which is surprising because you'd think it would contradict each other. The last couple tetrads, what do we have? have. When Columbus sailed the second time, it was one of these events. The next one was exactly when this fake Jerusalem was set up. You can't bring people from Europe, who are mostly of Turkish descent, put them in the Middle East and say they are Israelites. These people have no Middle East or just look at them. Look at them. The Israelites were already brought here. They were carted over after. As as Columbus said, they were carted over after and they were carted over as slaves. United States and Britain were the ones who had everything to do with them making an Israel. So this year, which is not over, it's not over. And these events, and I've, I've said before, all of this is cyber attacks. All the things leading up to this is because of Jade, Jade Helm, which, of course, Jade and the Jade Rabbit, which we talked about on the moon, is exactly about China. China and several other countries, Russia in general, have signed a peace treaty to end the wars. United States won't sign. Israel won't sign. Britain won't sign. Canada won't sign because, you know, we, we do whatever Britain says. So the events going on right now, 100%, we call these, 100%. It's obvious. 100% it's the same pedophiles who have raped this entire planet. These, these blood moons always have to do with a horrific rape. A rape that has not ended because it never ends. These triggered events, like they said, this Columbus settled the New World. He did not. But he started a chain of events that would bring us to our knees, which is happening. He started a chain of events that is wiping out the brown people of this planet ongoing. And I could say black people in the United States, but I mean anyone brown-skinned. They lump us all in one group. They hardly even talk about Native. But at this point, it's a targeted attack. It is going on worldwide. And it's obvious who started this, who's in charge of this, who they keep finding is involved with ISIS. It's American and British, American and British all the time. And, you know, those people will still argue with me and say, you know, it's Israel. Israel is your creation. Israel is your beast. The Jews are here and they're black. They've just forgotten who they are. So these events, and yes, I have um, things from the last two weeks leading up to this and explaining what was going on and how these things are exactly about a takedown. And of course, China's being blamed because their people are starving because they've been raped by Europe forever. Yeah, United States and Canada are selling our water, selling our land. But they've also made treaties with um, the native people up here and kept them. Canada's never done that. As far as I know, United States has never done that. And we've had someone on talking about what it's like being native in Russia. So know that the demon demonization that we are getting about China and Russia right now are lies. So I know that was a long rambling, guys, but that's what I think is going on. Well, um, I was reading through a couple of the articles that they have, and... Uh, Every, every, it seems like these blasts, uh, they're supposed to, these chemical plants are supposed to be kept so far away from uh, any uh, residential areas. 
uh, it says right here, let me find it, that uh, in, in the cases of these plants, that was not the case, that they had one, uh, let me get to it, where it, I think it said like one, uh, not very far at all, I'm right next door to it, I want to get the exact number, I don't want to say it, unless it's, the, the China Earthquake ne Network Center said the initial explosion was equivalent to 21 tons of TNT. Uh, let's see. With a population of about, it had a power equivalent to three tons of TNT detonating, while the second was the equivalent of 21 tons. Um, and this was, uh, they said the the different chemicals that it was cyanide. Let's see, it was um, uh, calcium carbide. Uh, Seven hundred tons of that. Um, sodium cyanide which was 27.4 times the limit that it should have been at the warehouse or, or the chemical plant, then potassium nitrate, ammonium nitrate, and sodium nitrate. You couldn't ask for a better bomb, you know? Just, and, and some of these, like, uh, I think it's the, is it the sodium cyanide that reacts with water, and they went in with the fire department with water to put the initial fire out on the one, you would think that, that these firemen would be up to code on chemicals and reacting to a chemical plant fire, uh, which is something that, that you would definitely want to know where to use water and where not to use water. I think there's a lot of mistakes that were made that, you know, we see in a lot of the false flags. Oh, uh, we didn't, the, the cameras weren't working because they were just out of order. Oh the water sprayer, what do they call it when, when your house is on fire, sprinkler system, wasn't working just that day, things like this, you know, and I look at these things, and three of them, one right after the other, so are you thinking that this is retaliation for the treaty signed? Yes, for that, and because... You there's been a lot of market backing up. They don't want American money. They don't want, they refuse American money. And I don't believe these people made these kind of mistakes because of the Chinese report that I read to you. And I'm not talking about the American reports. I'm talking about the Chinese reports where people are standing there saying that they felt an earthquake before. And then I talked about the weaponry that has been used that you can target from the satellites. And I spoke about the 72 satellites that are ringing the Earth that just were sent up this year, specifically with instruments of destruction on it that could trigger these events. So absolutely, this is an attack. This is Britain. This is United States. This is all the cross-dressing paraphernalia who have said that they will not lay down their weapons. They won't. They will not give us back our lands. They will not be peaceful and they will not step away or back down. So, it's war. This is the war of the world that has yeah. this time and not been told. They're right. not telling us. And as in all wars, it's us, we, the people across the globe, who are the ones who are being uh, damaged. Uh, those people pulling the strings, causing these, quote, uh, multiple explosions, um, they're not hurt. It's a war against us. The war has never stopped, like you said. And... You know, we have we have the uh, ongoing uh, issues that we have here now in uh, California with Agenda 21. They're cutting off water to a whole town. They're saying, sorry, you can't have any more to a whole town. Uh, this is simply a, a, a uh, reach for, for land, for private land. And we know that Agenda 21 is uh, part of 
uh, that's part of the Agenda 21 is, is relinquishing uh, public and private lands to uh, a central government, a global government. And uh, we talked a little bit about the Bundy Ranch and how the Chinese are putting solar panels there now. Um, I think that this is the pushback from the U.S. saying, how dare you? How dare you go against the agenda? You know, and, and the pushback that we're seeing with Russia also today. You know, how dare you? And uh, the U.S. has the means, uh, along with the other uh, Agenda 21 countries, to do what they need to do. We know they have the technology. We know that, that false flags is their way. So I'm not surprised at this. What I, what I am kind of surprised at is the frequency with which they're doing this. I mean, uh, you, can, you can explain away an accident uh, at a chemical plant. Uh, it went boom. Yes, that happens. It's like here, we had a silo that went boom, a grain silo. It happens. Big explosion does a lot of damage. Uh, but when it comes to the second explosion at a chemical plant, you have to say, um, hey, what's going on? You got problems, the same problems at each plant? And then when you have a third, it goes beyond thinking there's a problem at each plant. These plants have been operating for how long? You know, no explosions. And now, within a short amount of time, we have three. Uh, and why chemical plants? Because they'll do the most damage? Because they will take the most collateral damage? Is that what it's about? You know, there was just an explosion in Japan at the... American base. What's been predicted in this time, I, I absolutely agree with this, that there will be a major earthquake in the United States, Los Angeles, and Japan again within the next couple of days. It's going to happen. I, I don't usually call these, but I do 100% this time. Well, another thing that you were talking about, too, is uh, the, the uh, what's the name of it again, the Jewish year when when uh, all your dues are supposed to work. Shem, 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 something. Shemitah. The Shemitah. 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 Yeah, the right. Shemitah. What the word really means. It uh, means yeah. a debt. It's that, too. Yeah. yeah. It means you owe a debt, and when you don't pay the debt, payback happens. Bad right. stuff happens. And so we're coming up on that. Yeah, we're, yeah. The 21st of September is when things really start getting crazy pants. <laughs> if, but if you know that, first of all, this year has been predicted, specifically um, 2015, specifically, there's always horrific things that happen um programmed, of course, during um, the four blood moons in one year. Plus, there's the European Jewish BS. And this is why they wrote that book of filth for these events. So my question is, if is uh, you know, Russia and China at this stage are um, having their naval drills in the Sea of Japan – and China is buying up land all over the place, and even in Australia, especially in the United States. So all this seems to be, yeah, a sign, definitely heading to something. Is it going to be Russia and China? Um, you said that there was an explosion uh, in Russia, did you say? Um, there has been leading up. And Leading up right. to this, but today there was one in Japan, in Japan, U.S. naval base, so they can do their little false flag and say Japanese are attacking them. Right. Well, right. we also have the North Korea, South Korea, where uh, the U.S. was provocating by holding the um, exercises along the the border there, and it, it made... Uh, North Korea upset, and so in retaliation, South Korea started blasting their loudspeakers, 
and so North Korea tit for tat started blasting their loudspeakers and the US said in one report that we have canceled or postponed the exercise due to the tensions and then the very next day I think or the day after that they said we're resuming our exercises along the border so there's antagon uh, they're antagonizing as many areas as they can you know they're they're in the Middle East right now mm-hmm. with Iran with Israel they're uh, Russia China you know we just keep going and going and going uh, we have the uh, supposed Muslim who is going to kill the people on the train and just happened to have two Marines and another uh, military guy on the train uh, <coughs> and were able to ta- dun, 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 save the day, you know. Well, I'm just going to throw this in to see what you think because something has changed here, uh, which I wasn't aware of, uh, that Japan now holds more U.S. debt than China. It's a... Uh, more U.S. government debt than any other country, ending China's six-year run at the top foreign holder of U.S. treasuries, which I just, I thought that it was right. still China. And then we have, you know, the thing with Saudi Arabia and everything is, is Saudi Arabia is thinking about dropping the, the uh, dollar standard also for oil. You know, and they're one of the last bastions. The reason why we're there is because uh, and been supporting them so much with military is because they have made sure to continuously back their oil with the dollar. Uh, but as they're watching, things are slowly subsiding. Uh, we had the crash just the other day that, to me, is is the wake up, open your eyes, it's getting ready to happen kind of thing, the dry run, let's say, um, of of the markets falling through. All of this is playing its part and if we've got China and we've got Russia uh, just supposedly for for uh, this conversation you've got Russia, China wearing the white hats wanting to bring peace and you've got the rest of the UN agenda countries with the black hats saying no, 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 we want all the land, we want all the control then uh, the one with the most gold wins I think what do you think? Well, I I know that I think that I'm looking at this piece about who's trying to destroy the U.S. dollar and why. And uh, apparently um, this has something to do with the builder group um, also. And there's questions about uh, other countries working in tandem to try to destroy the U.S. dollar. What does this mean to us? And uh, uh, ultimately, it's all linked with what's going on, you know, what we see. I think it has to do, I think all of this has to do with the Agenda 21. Yeah. Because with the Agenda 21, you're moving away from uh, uh, sovereign currency to... Uh, one currency, one single currency, global currency. That's what they want to do. They want electronic uh, currency, and uh, they want the land. They want control of the land. They do not think that we, uh, as individuals, have a right to a piece of land for ourselves. They do not think this. They think that in order to safeguard the future of the earth, they must uh, determine where we will live and how we will live. And with Agenda 21, we know these super cities that they're, they're creating now to where the housing is stacked upon each other and all the, the uh, services are, are centered around uh, uh, this area uh, it's all designed to pull pull you into the cities and we know this is part of agenda 21 I have the I have the uh, right uh, PDF I've been reading through it and and they are definite that's why we see 
that these cities that are being built and nobody's moved into them. We right. have a new development being developed where it's a high rise, and uh, what did they call it? Oh, I can't remember. The lofts. Um, I think it is somewhere uh, up north, but uh, this this city is is one giant apartment building. <laughs> Excuse my background noise. Uh, Mm -hmm. surrounded by uh, the services industries. Well, you have the, the Agenda 21 is basically, in my understanding, is the New World Order. It's the, you know, that that's really um, what that means. New World, One World Religion, One uh, World Order. It's all under Agenda 21. And that the elite, basically the chosen elite, you know, are working to... Um, you know, put this, get this together, and this is what all these pieces are. Is what I'm looking at. Right, right, and there's got to be a reason to make us all want to come together. I mean, the destruction that we're seeing across the globe of the environment, it's it's deliberate to you know the problem reaction solution. Uh, there's too many people causing too much pollution, destroying the earth. Uh, in order to save the earth and save ourselves, we've all got to sacrifice. And the way we do that is by coming together in these huge, gigantic communities. And uh, there will not be any more individual travel. No cars. It'll be mass transit. And your your workplace will be in the area where you live and the, where you shop and your parks and your schools and your hospitals and your medical will all be here. There won't be, and this is Agenda 21. Uh, I'm not just thinking this is going to, this is actually written down. This is what they want. They want these cities to, to be uh, huge and, and megalithic. And then everything outside of it will be off hands to you. Do you remember, I think I've got the right title, Soylent Green? Yes. Yes. This, this is what this reminds me of. Um, my understanding is that's why they're scarfing up all the land, too, under the umbrella of preservation. Um, you know, so you think it's a good thing. Oh, they're going to preserve the land or they're going to watch over the owls that are there on that land. You can't, you know, so, but pretty much I think, uh, which is a good thing, but in a way you have to look at what's behind it, that they're, they're scarfing up all the land because that will be, um, uh, unavailable to pretty much all the people that are confined in these so-called cities and, uh, you'll all be chipped. <laughs> That's my estimation in the future. And you won't have money. Everything you, you know, will have uh, to do uh, goes, you have to have that chip, even to get food and whatever. Well, here's, yeah. here's something from the, this was something released, um, a warning um, that came out in the Financial Post after the Bilderberg meeting, uh, one of the Bilderberg meetings. It says, basically, a serious case of dollar damage is now underway with every uptick in stocks and commodities and its potential risks, debt and inflation. The U.S. dollar's day of reckoning is inching closer as its status as a safe haven currency fades. So we've been talking about this, right, you right. guys, about the right. collapse. Yeah, and and it's all centering. You know, that's the unique thing, thing about it that, that to me ties it all in is that we might not, through our research, be able to determine the the exact way in which they're going to do it or when uh, on the days that they're going to bring it to us. But, you know, so many people, uh, I can remember a year, two years ago, were pointing to September 2015, you know, because yeah. this is what the agenda, uh, this is what the elites... Uh, have planned for and it, we have to see knowing two years ago that people were aware and awake and could see this happening in September of this year where we're coming to and seeing what is happening right now uh, we have to know that we're on the right track so 
if there's going to be a collapse, uh, and there will be, there is a collapse now, the only thing that they can do, the only thing that would save the world that is geared onto one single currency, and that currency drops and falls through the floor, the only thing that they can do is create a world currency. That's the only thing that they will be able to, and, and problem, reaction, solution. So the people will feel that it's the only avenue that they have. And in fact, it will be, other than the solutions that we've talked about, about simply walking away. But one of the things I want to put out here is, uh, while the people, the individuals, are losing their lands, the corporations are gaining lands. Uh, the corporations are the ones who create the toxic waste, who create the damage to the environment. Yet we, the individuals, are being brought into these uh, mega cities and chastised and losing our ability to move freely, to, to exist freely, uh, while the corporations are untouched. And this is something that we have to look at. This also, we've known for a very, very long time, uh, is, is coming, you know? Um, but I think that's what we're going to see next. Uh, you know, on the um, 22nd, I, it's on a page somewhere, either 22nd or 21st, Dow Jones and went in two hours dropped 500 points. This is this is already going on. And if yep. you were listening when I said, Columbus said, yeah. what was going to happen in the States, which is happening. This isn't Agenda 21, guys. This is what they came over here to do. Right. Get, get your minds around this. They came here for this. For this. This isn't about if there's going to be a war. This is about whether or not your human biome has a chance to exist. This is about your family line, whether it has a chance to survive right now. And take this seriously. I am not kidding. You need to be doing stuff for your health right now. Find everything. And if you're on the West Coast, get out of there. If you're still in Japan, I maybe the radiation's already taking you guys. But it's it's not going to stop. This won't stop now. What's happened in Japan relates to cesium, iodine, strontium, plutonium. This cloud has already been released. There are millions of dead right now on this planet because of that. The West Coast is collapsing. The Ring of Fire is alive. Yellowstone Park is far too active. They've just had 144, surprisingly enough, earthquakes in a day. So realize this isn't a game we're playing now. Plus you the need plague. To be prepared. <laughs> Plus the plague showing up. It, we're getting the plague because of what happened in Japan. We have no immunity. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you know, this is something I was thinking about, though, and I need to do a little bit of research on it. Anybody out there might think that, you know, maybe you could too. But um, I remember reading a while back about how plague had been uh, missing from one of the uh, CDC, I think, or maybe... Uh, uh, Maybe even the military. I cannot remember, but I do yes, remember yeah. reading Several about that. Them. And we have it on the page, too. Yeah. They're not... They will catch now because we are sick. And if you're not burst, boosting your immune system, and I mean serious, not playing, not a little bit of vitamin C, if you haven't done it, well, don't listen. Don't listen. Seriously. At this point, if you are not prepared, it's too late. 
you're coughing think, for a yeah. reason. You are you are having blood in your stool for a reason. This there's dementia in twenty and thirty year olds for a reason, and it's overwhelming in the last year and a half. How are people missing this? Because they're being drugged. When I think you're right, well, yeah. I'm drugged. you're stupid. If you're, if you're missing it, you deserve. Well, I think you're right. I think that's the key piece. Uh, forget the dollar. I mean, really, I mean that's all going to be about inflation, where you won't even be able to afford anything. Um, but I think you're right. It's the health. Our health is really the key piece. Forget it. If you're not healthy, you're not going to be able to withstand anything. So yeah, that's very important, Tracy. Right. And and this is the thing that they're taking, is our health. I just did on my show yesterday, I played audio of the drugging of our children and what it does to them. And we have these children already that have been drugged and are grown-ups now. Mm-hmm. And that is why... Uh, along with everything else that we're that we're under, all the other assaults from the the toxins in the food and the air and the water, and and the immunization, all of this stuff, is is for one purpose only. It's not to help us. It's not to make us healthier. It's not to create abundance. It's not to create a a future free of disease. It is simply created, and anyone. Anyone out there who who is not uh, brain dead from these frickin' drugs has to be able to see this, has to be able to see what they are doing to us. So many people are dependent on pharmaceuticals. Seven million children in the U.S. Seven million children. I, I saw that uh, figure, I heard it, and it, it just blew my mind. And I know that the figure is probably under-exaggerated. Seven million children that are brain dead, you know? Uh, maybe not clinically as, as the, the medical profession will, will uh, say, but these children cannot function. As adults, they have nothing to base a life on. They are simply going to follow and do and react as told. So we have a whole two generations now. What's going to happen when our generation, uh, those of us sitting here right now, have passed? What do we have for our children if we don't start doing something now? Just saying. Go, Barbara. Well, just thinking about uh, the... Looking at all these pieces, the manipulation from every angle, it seems, uh, I guess I just want to reiterate that we have to focus, really hold a focus, a strong focus on a priority uh, on how to survive, how to protect ourselves. And that's um, definitely our health and our mental capacity because they're hitting us with that, the brainwashing, but also... You have um, the electromagnetic waves. You have the jade at work. Who knows what really we know some, but the depth of how that really is uh, affecting us. And you have Fukushima. You have all that stuff. It's a lot to deal with. And uh, we have to find, you know, prioritize. And definitely you have to be prepared. And, yeah, I feel like we're a little – if you're not prepared by now, as Tracy says, you're a latecomer. And – but still – at least start. If you're just getting awake now, well, it doesn't do any harm to start. Yes, you may be a latecomer, but, um, you know, draw upon the power that you have, your will to live and to protect your family. This is really serious. We've been talking about this for so long. I just get the feeling that it's so incomprehensible to people that they just hear it and then they just, that that message comes into their head about, well, this is this can't be. How can this possibly be? How could they do this to us? How could our government do this? Uh, World War III, they want it, and they want control over the people. They want uh, the Soylent Green 
uh, <laughs> happening. We've but we've seen so many things. You know, talk about uh, well, the Matrix movie. Then you have the soil and green. You have that. You have all this stuff that we've been told and shown over and over and over again, thinking, oh, these are just fantasies or fantastical movies or books or whatever. But people are tuned in, and that's why we're getting these messages. And uh, perhaps we're also getting messages to see how we're going to react. I think that's part of it, too. I think they do things. I think they set things up to see what what is the response. What? How will the people respond? How will the masses respond? Will they respond? How dumbed down are they? And how much more do we have to dumb them down according to the percentages of the people that do mention this, do talk about this, like those of us who are the conspiracy theorists, you know, they're checking on that. They want to know how many people are awake. How much can we put on these people? How many are dumbed down? How many will follow the Pied Piper? And so on. Well, that brings me to another point of discussion that I really would like to talk about. And um, uh, I was given a link the other day to a site that was talking about the movie Ascension. Uh, I think it is. And... Uh, I've seen the previews of this movie, and I read a synopsis of it, and then I watched the clip, or I read the dialogue, uh, because my flash player wouldn't let me watch the clip, but I read the dialogue from the movie, and uh, uh, it is about the the contrivance of... Um, that's my cat scratching on the door. <laughs> but it's it's the contrivance of the uh, blue. Stop. It, it never happens unless I'm getting ready to go on the radio. But anyway, it was it was about them uh, contriving the uh, belief that there would come a, a, a race of people that would come to the earth and save the earth in the last days but really all it was was really a um, culling uh, a harvest and they were uh, showing in this movie uh, there was a fight between uh, an earthborn girl and the uh, aliens she she wasn't from earth and she was supposed to take her place or something. I can't. I didn't actually watch the movie, so if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But anyway, it was the fight between the good and the bad. You know, the harvester that wanted to come take all the people, and those who who wanted to just live in peace and stuff. It's it's an exact correlation to what we'd expect to be seen. And then we see an article from uh, I can't remember the website. Maybe one of you can, where they talk about this and show these clips in the dialogue and they say don't get on the ships uh do you guys think that this is going to happen we know with with blue beam and all of this stuff and then these beams of light that have been appearing across the globe in different areas uh the last one i think was in florida these these beams of light that just go straight up Uh, i don't know if you guys have seen them but do you think all of this is in preparation for that? For the ships coming? Yeah, Jupiter ascending. There you go. Thank you, Tracy. Thank no you. Problem. Do you think though that this is this is all we we're being prepped? Uh, you know, the the prophecies that say the star people are going to come back. They're going to take us to a new heaven and a new earth and and all of this stuff. Do you think that this might have to do with that? Well, if I might put my two cents in here, go. Uh, my opinion is is that no one is going to save us. I don't care who they are. I'd even say say the Messiah is really not going to be here to save us because if the Messiah does return, basically it's said that those who actually are aligned with, and I'm just paraphrasing here, aligned with God or the way of God. Uh, God's rule or God's law will be taken or move into the thousand years of peace, which is basically sim- is, is really identical to the words the thousand years of peace. After the collapse, after everything goes to hell, it's said that the new world will be here. The Messiah will return. But 
uh, for those who have been uh, ignoring or turned away from the the way of God or a way of creator or what we know to be good, the goodness, uh, the word, uh, will not be raptured, if you want to use that term. And in the First Nations prophecy is similar. The thousand years of peace, it is said that after the end of this era or this time of chaos and madness, there will be a shift into the fifth world, thousand years of peace. But you will not be able to move into that if you are not aligned with uh, God. I'll use that term. W- what does that mean? Okay, it means what we call walking in a sacred manner or compassion or, um, you know, uh, the, the uh, 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 being in peace, compassion and loving, which, of course, is again, back to frequency. I don't think that there's, we're here to, to go through all this to then suddenly be, you know, taken up on ships and everything's going to be okay. Uh, why are we here? Is that what we're here for? To make a mess of things and then, okay, now you're going to get on the ship and everything will be fine? I don't think so. I think we're here to do work. I think we're here to make a difference. And if we don't make a difference and if we don't wake up, which means, of course, you know, wake up, uh, turn away from the dark, turn away from the evil, turn away from the violence and the hatred and the prejudices and so on, and wake up into you know, if you want to use the the teachings of Yeshua or God or what the First Nations people say, you know, is is the same, really. If we don't, um, we're not going to make it through. I think uh, nobody's going to come and save us. That's my perspective. We, it's up to us. Period. Grow well, up. I do agree. It's time Superman's to grow up. Superman's not coming. Yeah, Superman's not coming. I think all those things are to make us. Sort of like the promise of being saved by either the Messiah or by the ships coming. I think that's a ploy to get everybody, you know, just, just, well, well, you know what, we're going to be saved, so what? I can just be the hateful person that I want. I could hurt people or I could do what I want to the earth. It doesn't matter because I'm going to be saved. I think that's just to put us in that state, that frame of mind. Yes, Superman's going to come and everything will be fine. Spider-Man is on the way. That's my opinion. What do you think, Tracy? Uh, Well, it was on um, the 21st that the Dow Jones dropped more than 500 points. 23 days before um, Alul, the 29th one, will go in to this. There's a whole bunch of stuff going up. Do I think the aliens are coming to get us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do. do you think it's a harvest? Oh, for sure. For sure. You know, in Jupiter um, rising or ascending, I can't remember which one. I know we talked about it months ago. It was about who owns the Earth. This is what it said in Revelations. It's talking about taking stock of us as commodities. And at the very end, it says, oh, yeah, and human souls. Um, I don't see any of this new. I think from what we've said, it's all been predicted. None of this stuff is new. United States was always a corporation. It was always about total control just like happened in Europe was always about using us as cattle and yes they are drugging our kids more and more now we're talking about it but it's they're putting it in our water there's no way we are just peeing out enough pills for the drug levels to be in our water there's not enough ocean water for what's dropping from the skies. 100% they want us pacified during these final stages. So know that between now and December, the end of December, this is a huge year. Myself, um, I've already done things. I've already even made plans to go to our far east Canada, of course, I'm not 
go into Far East, Far East. If need be. But we're already getting warnings. And so far, when Kesha said, time to move, he's been right. Every time. The things that he's coming out with, he can prove. And these people are so sick that they sent soil with radiation through local mail. Not only just local mail, it went from Japan all the way to Italy. Don't know how many people's hands touched that, how many people in the plane. They don't care. And if people are still thinking that they care, um, they don't. They don't care who they have to kill. Yeah, there's no there's no difference between the rich man and the poor man. If you're not the elite, you are replaceable. Yeah. You are harvestable. Yeah. So the only way we can fight this is to fight this in yourself. Be smart. Be clever. Be the thing that frightens them the most. Be ready. And I'm not just talking about preparedness. I'm not talking about get your guns because it's not going to be needed. That's a myth, too. You won't need them. There won't be enough of us. People are already. If you go outside and look at people, you see 15-year-olds who look 45. You know, the um, just to revisit this uh, Shamita, and I had sent you that information a while back, Patty, on the Harbinger uh, that relates to this. Yes. And um, it really has to do with um, the law, the Creator's law or God's law about the um, Hebrews. Um, but it, it, it affects all of us uh, because it's about um, a... Um, a debt. And I've been saying this. If you owe someone a debt and you don't pay it back, there will be repercussions. And they can be very serious because there's uh, certain periods of time. Uh, and, and they all relate to the blood moons where collapse has happened, among other things. Now, the debt. The debt is basically what we owe or what we owe creator or God. And I'm going to add what we owe the earth, the mother earth. We owe her a great debt and we are not paying it back. We're still taking. And uh, if you've turned your back on God or creator, all right, you haven't paid your debt either. And what does that mean? What is the debt? Well, again, I'm going to just reiterate, I feel and believe that the debt is to be, you know, helpful, supportive, good, compassionate, uh, do good works for the whole, for all people, um, That just to name a few. But it's really about um, the nation, the nations of people uh, to take what they call a breather or time. A specific time is the Shemitah, a seven-year uh, uh, period where you have reaped and sowed everything to put in your pocket, to put in your bellies, whatever it is. And then at that seven-year period of time, the Shemitah year is basically to focus, to stop reaping, okay, but to focus on higher, more spiritual pursuits. It's sort of like taking a rest, taking a breather. Um, and it's uh, that's really what it basically means. And the point that this rabbi was making was that the Jewish people have turned away from this um, this ancient way, the Shemitah. And uh, he's aligning what's happening in the United States with the greed uh, and so on and so forth. He's focusing on the United States, but this is happening all over the world. So we have collective nations here ignoring um, the word of God, how to really live together, how to be compassionate uh, to know that we're all related and live that way. And, of course, take care of the earth and all the resources here just to stop scarfing up everything and and uh, just continuing that way. So that's really what the Shemitah 
is about focusing on more spiritual pursuits and being in that, uh, you know, being that way, walking in that way, taking the breather and resting everything. Stop scarfing up everything. Yeah, the Shemitah could also mean the uh, uh, taking a rest as in uh, production stops, time to uh, go get the herd and take them to market. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the way I look at this because I look at all the prophecies and, and how they're so explicit in making sure that we know that there will be a day when things will be made aright. Uh, and they tell us in different ways depending on our culture. They give us the same, uh, maybe different stories, maybe different analogies, maybe different parables, all of this stuff. But still, they all say that there will come a day when there will be a return of your Creator. And in that day, uh, certain ones will be taken and others will be left. Mm -hmm. uh, so we know that this is a playbook. It's the way I look at it. Yeah. Um, I'm not one given to uh, be a UFO buff. I never have been. Uh, I've always wanted to see one. Uh, never saw one. I have had uh, an experience. Uh, two actual ex experiences that uh, I still cannot say definitively if they were of the UFO. If definitely for me, it was, but uh, whether it was Earth or military or, or w whatever. But what I can say is that it is logical looking at the way that our history reads, the way that we have been manipulated, the things that are being done right now at this time that show me that there is something else and I've talked about this a long time ago I've uh, been talking about this that we do not know what is actually at the end of this I don't believe that the one world government is the end of this I think the one world government is just consolidating as much power in one place to rebuild after uh, our demise you know, right. uh, if anything. But what I'm saying is, is I truly do believe that we are at a point in this time, in this day, coming soon to a neighborhood near you, uh, an awakening beyond what anybody's conceived. And I do not believe that it necessarily is a benefit to us. Just saying. Well, I have seen with my whole family and other people, uh, UFOs early in the 50s, but reading about sightings, so-called sightings, back, way back in the 1800s, and even earlier, we've, you know, in paintings, even in religious paintings. But I just want to just say one more thing on this, what this really, this piece means to me and this Shemitah, the words uh, of this is, is really, it's about concentrating on our spiritual mission in life and less on our material pursuits, uh, on why we are needed, less on what we need. And, of course, this has to do with, you know, our, our faith and uh, less on, uh, you know, uh, reaching and, again, just uh, scarfing up things instead of, being there for others and our what is our spiritual mission in life and so on. Everybody's in the material mind and uh, that's not going to save you. It's not going to give you inner peace. It's not going to bring you health. And uh, so I just wanted to add that piece. Well, also to the way I look at this is that had the control system not been here to be put in place, we would not be at this point today. Uh, we would have lived in balance. We would have uh, uh, evolved uh, chronologically in a more stable manner. Uh, we would have uh, not necessarily uh, developed the tools that destroy. You know, I really think that manipulation 
has a, a great deal to do with this. And I believe that we've been manipulated from the various, very earliest of our existence, you know, of, of our race's existence. And I'm talking about race as a whole, uh, globally. I do believe that, that everything that they have done uh, is something that is well practiced with them. And that we, the people, never had a chance, actually, to, to uh, the, the moment that we said, okay, I, I'm going to listen to you talk about uh, God, uh, or I'm going to uh, uh, let you uh, determine what my worth is by this coin. When we decided to do that, it was all over for us. Maybe we never had that deciding factor. Maybe we only think we did. I don't know. You know, um, when you raise, say you have a farm and you want to raise chickens. And so you go and you get these eggs and you put them in an incubator. And you get the kind of chickens you want. And you, you put them in there and, and you hatch these, these chicks. And you give them a wonderful life. All these chicks know is that there's plenty of warmth, lots of feed, and everything is hunky-dory. And they grow up to be these young pullets, and, and they get fed, and they got this yard, and they think, uh, well, that's cool, and the yard's got a fence around it, but that's cool, it's okay, it's to keep me safe. And you got these little boxes lined up next to each other where you go and you lay your eggs, and they disappear, but that's cool, it's okay. And then one day you stop laying. And you think, well, now I don't even have to lay eggs anymore. And then you wind up on the on the dinner table. You know? That's what we're doing. That's what's being done to us. They raised us as chicks and brought us all the way up. Now we're done laying eggs. Making sense? Any sense? I like sure brown does. eggs myself. <laughs> yep. The eggs are being poisoned. I don't think that matters to them. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> Tracy, what do you think? Well, yeah, that's that's the point. They're done with us. They're done. Yep. With us. And they'll make more. If they've decided they this is why I've been telling you guys about the AI. They don't want us anymore. They're done with us. They've made right. a new thing. Yep. The singularity. This, they've used us the to do AI it. is real, guys. They've already made a sentient computer that's four of them passed the test last week. These new bodies, these lifelike dolls, already done, already made, already here. They don't need us. It's just if we die too quickly, we won't clean up the mess. Yeah, and we always have to clean up the mess, don't we? They don't want to do it. No. And they don't want us to panic yet when they start bringing out their obviously not human soldiers. But we've gotten used to the robocalls, we've gotten used to the fact that it's very rare we even have real people on the phone. Even the voices you think are all from India, those aren't real people. They're not, guys. They're already, we've gotten used to it. Every movie is showing us this is going to be okay. It's already here. It's not a question of if they're going to roll this out. It's been rolled out. I said over and over again this AI agenda. I've talked about Jade. You could look up the stuff I showed you about this thing. Nobody is panicking about that. They're worried about the great white hope. Whatever what's that idiot's name? Um with the bad Trump? Yeah, that's one. They worried <laughs> about him. And, you know, there was just a rally in an all-black town with over 45,000 just white people sitting in an audience. That's a KKK rally. No one worried about that either. Did, is, are you talking about Trump's uh, big rally there? Yeah. Did you see those people with, the, say, with that sign, thank you, Jesus, God, for sending us Trump? Yes. 
there are some white people very afraid. Oh, my and, God. You know, we had them in one spot. Why didn't we just bring Did you see the picture of that woman with the, holding the infant in front of I'm Trump? The look on that baby's people. face? I'm listening to people <laughs> oh my who have radio shows talking and asking my opinion. Like, like have you heard me even once? How is this going to go over well with me? What's your opinion on Trump? Really? Yay, it's a white guy. We're saved. Like, what do you want me to say? <laughs> what do you think you're going to get out of my mouth? Well, this, they said that about so Obama. And Obama so- was black, if you remember. They said he was the Messiah. Yeah. My parents cried. Really they were hoping for the best. That was a we setup. All thought so, but it's obvious after five minutes. Even with his... Um, little peace award when he did nothing oh he did awesome he's torn this place into pieces it's not his fault he's a face card yeah he's and what do they want i mean they're just laughing in our face by putting trump out there and the the biggest embarrassment is that people like you said are ecstatic about him being there well, that was part of the purpose of uh, putting George W. in there, you know, to see, test how how well the people would deal with, you know, a useless puppet right in their faces and just not even be able to see it. And love him for it. Yeah. He's endearing. Yeah. The, the, the videos that they took of him being drunk and dancing with the shakes and everything, you know, uh, people love that. He's he's just drunk. He's having a good time. They're frat boys. They're all these, you know, the the college boys. Still, they remain, you know, the fraternity uh, mindset. And that fool me once, <laughs> uh. fool me once, <laughs> fool me again. Uh. <laughs> well, it, uh, it's it's really kind again. of uh, stunning to see the amount of people. Uh, ecstatic over Trump. He doesn't give a crap about those people. He doesn't give really a hoot about anybody. I mean, it's it smacks of mind control, doesn't it? That yep. uh, you can have these people go gaga over uh, Barack Obama and unheard of, and then you have Donald Trump. He's had a reality show on TV is known for his backdoor dealings and his uh and this is another thing you know this man will will hire illegals or anybody he has to i mean his history is not that great he's not that great of a of a corporate man either he loses a lot of money what are they basing this on other than it must be mind control that means he's perfect for the politics, you know. He it's, it's it's just like running a business, but you don't have to pull a profit. Well, I think they have a lot of plants. They put plants in the audience. They pay them off. But you know, there is an old Donald Trump documentary, which is now a chilling horror film. <laughs> but I, <laughs> and that's that's right here in front of me. But I think it's present. It's a chilling horror film. It's true. Well, yeah. I mean. They're obviously not thinking. People are obviously not thinking. Uh, it's not happening. There's no processes, no higher processes going on other than instinctual survival, you know, uh, in society. I think that's all they have room for anymore. I think that they have to be home to watch the TV to tell them what they're going to be able to eat and tell them what they're going to be able to laugh at and tell them what they need to wear and tell them what they need to buy. You know, otherwise, uh, they won't do anything. I really think that that's what we're we're raising. And when the time comes, they're just going to probably come along on the TV and tell them, stay in your homes, don't go anywhere, and they'll stay right there, and they'll come and they'll pick them up. Don't get on those buses. Don't get on those trains. Don't get on that UFO. Don't get on that UFO. Head for the hills. <laughs> <laughs> they did the test in Philadelphia. And seven cities around Philadelphia. With their fake 18-year-old bomber. 
They did it, and people sat in their homes and waited to get dragged out, and they were dragged out, and saw their neighbors dragged out and did nothing. There's no question about what the American people will do. They will do nothing. Exactly. Exactly. And insert your country's name there. The majority of people will do as they're told. You know, and, and, and there's the only thing, the only way that we have to overcome this is by doing exactly what we've been talking about. Getting yourself healthy, mind, body, and spirit. It's all got to be there. That's the only thing that's going to get you through. Uh, location might be a good thing. If you're in a city, it probably isn't a good idea for any eventuality, whether it's uh, uh, just the Bilderbergers, like everybody thinks, or whether it is uh, extraterrestrials or inter or whatever. Uh, whatever it is, it's coming. You're not going to get away from it. It's coming here now, and and it cannot be avoided. So the only thing that you, you can do is on an individual basis for you or your family, make preparations, make sure that, that you have done the best that you can do to give yourself and your family a chance, you know. I do remember one of the... Um, Indian prophecies that did say I, I want to say Hopi but I'm not sure where it tells you to go into the mountains or the forest do you know what I'm talking about Barb? Yeah it's been over 20 yes. years that the Hopi have been telling us to get into the mountains and find your people your land your water and prepare your gardens because you're not going to be able to survive alone Yes. Get, get away from the coasts, get away from the waters, you know, down, yeah, go to the mountains. This has been, for a long while they've been saying this. Yep. I mean, they're not the only ones, but they're the first ones that started to come out with this. Right. I mean, as far as First Nations people, yeah. And you see, now we have the push for the last, I'd say, five or six years to where... Uh, in the national parks and areas like that, uh, they're closing up caves all of a sudden, hundreds of caves at a time, and uh, restricting movement now into mountain areas and, and, and such. Uh, most of the land now is, is corporate, that is around uh, the uh, areas that you would think you'd want to go. So they know what they're doing. And you know the one thing that we always know? Okay, Tracy, love you. Tracy had to go. Uh, but the one thing that we always know is if they say that it's good, if they say we should, then we shouldn't, and it's not good. You know? So if they say, uh, yeah. yeah, we have to know that, that it's backwards. There's a reason behind everything they do. So everything that they tell us, we need to look at the other side of it. Well, they want to deplete everyone and on every level so severely that you can't think for yourself, that you have no resources to draw upon, that you're completely beholden to them. Um, and then they can say, get on the bus, go to the FEMA camp, we'll take care of you, we'll feed you because the terrorists are coming or ISIS are coming or the, or the aliens are coming or whatever it's going to be. They're preparing this. They've been diligently moving forward to this. And this is where Agenda 21 comes in. And this is where Soylent Green comes in, where they have all these people, you know, stacked up in these buildings. And you can't go to the land because it will be off bounds to you. You will not be allowed. They're scarfing up all the land for that very reason. And that this is how I see it. Well, that's right. And, and the corporate structure will be what is then the power um, and it will determine what you eat it will determine where you sleep it would de- it will determine uh, when you sleep um, I just read an article uh, thinking Japan and uh, this woman was working a hundred hours a week mm. and it was expected, mm. you know, uh, 
we think here in the U.S. that when we have to work 12 and 16 hour days that it's rough. You know, yeah. uh, people are committing suicide. Uh, people's bodies are breaking down because they are so ill from working all these long hours. Uh, look at the American people. What would you do? I mean, could you last? Seven million of our children are on psychotropic drugs. How many adults do you think if there are seven million children that are on some type of, of uh, mind-altering drug, along with all the other pharmaceuticals, at 100 hours a week, you know? Yeah, well, you know, um, third world countries, people in third world countries, this is what they've been subjected to forever, is that type of work, you know, work pattern. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, and we complain, you know, uh, here you're right, but if you think about if you think about all the pieces to this puzzle, you have to remember that, uh, and I predicted this years ago, I said to people here, eventually everyone born will be chipped. They will have a chip implanted in them. And this is part of that Agenda 21, so that you really um, will be completely uh, helpless and beholden to them. And and also, when you have a chip implanted in you, they can control you. They know what you're doing, where you are, and so on and so forth. And um, people in um, some European countries are actually um, stepping up to the plate to do this. There was an article on these people who do body uh, enhancements. But I don't call it enhancing, uh, but they do. Um, I mean, they're actually... Uh, injecting their foreheads with some kind of, uh, I don't know, a silicon to make horns so that uh, that they look like horned people and they're having chips put in them. Um, They're having chip parties, actually, so that people will have an easier life. This is under the premise, well, the horns are not about easier life. It's just that they're into this um, Satanism. Um tattoos and body piercings and so on and so forth. You know, there are ancient cultures, of course, that that did this too. You know, um, painting their bodies and piercings and so on and so forth were um, a ceremony or religious, for religious reasons. Um, you know, that type of enhancement. But the chipping idea, they're saying, is it will make your life easier because you will not have to carry a wallet, you won't have to carry identity, you won't have to, you know, be be bothered with any of that. You'll be able to enter into any building that, uh, you know, that basically reads your chip. Uh, if you need money or food, there you go. Uh, what that's going to be the lifestyle, and they're hoping. These people said that they are hoping that this will become the norm. And you know what? It's the government that's hoping that this will become the norm, feeding that this information to them, make your life easier. You know, you don't have to pull out your wallet or carry a pocketbook or, or find your documents. It will all be encoded within this chip. It will make your life easy. Right, and uh, people will, Barbara. Uh, the majority of the people will not see this as a threat. They will yeah. see it as the ultimate convenience. Yeah, well, they're being told that it will be the convenience. They're, that's what they're being brainwashed to believe. Make it easier. You will be happy. Your life will be, you know, less burdensome. You will be free and you'll be happy. Don't you want to be happy? Here, we can make you happy. We can bring happiness into your life. This is what it's all about. People looking on the outside for somebody to give them the answer about how to feel happy, how to feel empowered. But it's not. It's not going to be that way. No, it's not. It's not. Um, I want to take a quick break here, uh, and uh, we'll be right back. Um, But uh, I want to let everybody else know, too, all our listeners out there, that coming up in about 25 minutes is Gerald Whitehorse standing, and I have something to say. Uh, We'll play a little bit of music while we get his panel together and then make sure during that time 
that you get things done around the house, get yourself a beverage, and don't forget your pen and paper because Gerald will give you information and links that you will definitely want to read up on. So stay tuned for that. And we're going to take a short break. You're listening to the TCT Brain Gym on these changing times uh, on the Awake Radio Network. Not these changing times, but yes, these changing times. Um, And we'll see you on the other side. And welcome back, everybody, to the Brain Gym on these changing... (laughs) I did it again. These changing times, part of the Awake Radio Network group. Um, We are discussing off-air... And I know that many of you who who listened to me ramble over the years have heard me say that uh, there's something else that we're missing. There's something else that we have yet even to consider or even conceive because we're still, uh, a lot of us, even those who are awake, are still grasping at straws of political, uh, religious, or cultural uh, reasons, um, agendas. I think that um, there is a bigger reason than these things. Uh, And we were just talking about that uh, off air, and Barb was talking about, you know, and, and I think a lot of us had the same experience, Barb, that we grew up even as a child, having an awareness about the reality and the non-reality in which we were being forced to live were two different things, you know? Yeah, I mean, we were saying, because your question is very important or your perspective is very important about, uh, yes, like you said, if they wanted a one-world order and to throw us all into FEMA camps by now... uh, you know, enslave us, but they have enslaved us in many ways. And uh, of course, they've only put the FEMA camps together within the last few years. Why? Why all that? Uh, You have to look at that because there's going to be another step. There's going to be another uh, uh, part of the system opening up or, you know, uh, but, you know, you said um, that you feel there's a missing piece here and that they're letting us, uh, they've relaxed the restrictions or they've relaxed the barriers of our seeing things. And, and I felt immediately that I, yes, since I was a child, my instincts and my just my, the way things come to me, I had a sense that something wasn't right or that there were lies. And I couldn't, of course, identify those or that. Uh, what was really being said to me until I matured and I was able to do research and put more things together and also meet people like yourselves who are also, you know, in the same, on the same, basically pretty much uh, in the same mode, uh, same wavelength and where we confer with each other. And then, you know, you're not crazy and that all of your instincts and your, your initial perspectives as a younger person are, were actually right. And, um, my what this leads me to reflect upon is okay if there is something first of all we're looking at something very dark and evil okay uh happening Uh, we know that we're looking at you know this deliberate dumbing down through the education we're looking at the system set up by the patriarchy dominator rule we're looking at the demise of the goddess cultures uh, that I'm reading about on, on Turtle Talk, way back to the Paleolithic and Neolithic cultures, and then even through up into later cultures where there was that harmony and balance between the masculine and the feminine. And we've talked about that even in relation to Turtle Island here. But we're talking tribal people all the, throughout the whole of the world and with an understanding of the great mother goddess or the sacred uh, mother uh, that of that type of living that culture and then i'll be reading about what happened to those cultures because this is very important because that tells us how we got to where we are today and who were those people and what was the what was the infiltrating intrusion into that way of being we know the history here uh that when the europeans came to turtle island they came 
upon a place where people were living according to the metrilineal or the clan uh, system, which is a partnership. And I'm going to start using that term, the partnership culture, <clears throat> because um, that's what uh, is, is actually I'm reading about in this book with the chalice and the blade is about partnership. Uh, between the male and the female, <clears throat> and it's also respect and understanding of the great sacred mother, which was, of course, termed the goddess in those earlier times. Uh, we don't use the word goddess in the First Nations way, but it is the same. It's the sacred mother, and, of course, the understanding that women are the givers of life. But the partnership culture is what we're looking at and what we've lost and we know when the Europeans came here that they found that type of culture here, which they once had too, but they lost it and were brainwashed and systematically brainwashed uh, into the patriarchy dominator violations of everything sacred, everything sacrosanct, not just the women, but everything. And um, so <clears throat> I'm looking at that with just this question and this little uh, statement here that you made about there's something missing. And and I go to that piece. I go to the piece of the dark, the evil, the Satan, the Satanism or the Satanist, um, that dark energy, um, <clears throat> and, of course, the light. And why are we here on Earth? What are we doing? What are we capable of as human beings that we have a spirit within us, that we are sacred? Um, I look at all that. So, again, I want to go back to, is this about, again, the battle of the dark and the light? Um, and everything is agreed upon. Even those that come here to agree upon to to uh, be the perpetrators. Uh, it's a higher level system that I'm talking about. Um, it's It's something that is mysterious, but it exists, and we're all a part of it. We're all a part of this plan. Uh, and that's why I keep saying we have more power uh, than we really understand. Our power was uh, dumbed out of us. The knowledge of the wisdom <clears throat> that our ancestors lived according to, utilizing that wisdom and knowledge about how to live in harmony and balance, not just being kind to each other or being respectful or as caretakers, but the alchemy or the frequency, or the energy, and that is very important. And we know that when we have, you know, an angry day, that that affects everybody around us, but it just isn't just that. It goes on into infinity. So to me, Patty, I just kind of step back and look at, okay, the missing piece. Could that be it? I don't know. I'm just throwing that out to you. Well, you know, when you said, when you were talking about that uh, and about the contract that we made coming here to deciding to be one side or the other, uh, the first thing that popped into my mind was the Matrix uh, and and uh, the battle there. Um, we could be in, in a created Matrix. Uh, this could all be, as you said, uh, an experience. That and and I have I have always believed that the energy of creation, our Creator, which is the energy of creation, created us, or we were created in order to experience what cannot be experienced in the form of frequency and energy. Uh, we are here to. Uh, live out experiences that can only be lived out in in life and I think that I, I, I have always thought that 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 is why we are here that we chose to come here and like you said Barb uh, it could totally be that we are here in this time to do what we were contracted to do when we came here the experience that we that we chose to have However, I don't believe that we are uh, cemented to that. I think that we can err, err or change um, from one moment to the next. You know, how we define our experience here. Whether we define it as a walk of honor or whether we say, the heck with that. I'm going to define it as this. But then again, 
uh, saying that and thinking uh, to myself while I'm saying it, we could have made that contract before we came to. So that's who knows? Right. I don't know. Well, that's just, I guess that's just the way I, I, I finally come to look at things when we go into these deep pieces. It just feels right to me, uh, personally. Um, I think there's something far greater going on here, um, but we're not, uh, we don't have to be distant from it. It doesn't have to be outside our realm because we're a part of it. And uh, we are all a part of this. We're all a part of uh, creation. We're co-creators. And we were given that ability. Um, and yes, we are easily manipulated because we have ego. Uh, <laughs> that's the problem. Uh, we have an ego. We have issues. Uh, we are being inundated with the brainwashing machine um, for sure. And that's deliberate. And that's their job, I guess. Well, what's our job? That's how I look at it. What did you agree to do when you came here? What was your original agreement before you came here? What, exactly. What, what part are you? What part did you agree to to take here? Right. Exactly, and to walk in your truth, no matter what your truth may be. You know, uh, truth isn't always pretty, um, and and truth is is an individual thing. Um, as far as. Uh, uh, now saying if I take this apple and hold it above my head, uh, I believe it's the truth that it's going to fall straight down. Of course, that's that's a truth that everybody can grab onto. But when we're talking about spiritual truths, I think it is as individual uh, as can be. I don't think that there is any uh, sense of, of, of conformity. However, however, that doesn't have any bearing on the fact that we might have all contracted to come here because energy has no need of, of uh, faith. Energy has no need of conviction. Energy has no need of religion, uh, frequency, all of these things. Uh, the only thing that makes a difference to any energy or frequency is the movement uh, of that frequency, agitated or passive or however. Uh, something has to move on it in order for it to act. So if we, are, if we all come from the energy of creation and we are all here in this experience, in this life, then we are uh, creating energy. We are creating uh, specific energy, specific frequencies that have a resonating effect, just like the, the, the stone in the pond, you know. We know this because we know how energy works. Go ahead. We do. We do. We do know. I mean, um, certainly, but it's not uh, beyond everyone to know this. We are the source. You know, we are the source of a particular type of frequency or energy, and that depends on your emotional state. That depends on where you are in your mind because it's the mind, the monkey mind, that really controls us. Now, there's something else about us that is um, far greater or more powerful, and that's what we have to get to know. That is the spirit within us. That is the true nature of ourself or our connectedness to creator, God. Um, we, we have that, but that has to be a conscious um, ag agreement. We have to consciously agree uh, to connect with that. It's ever-present, and when you do connect with it, it raises your frequency. It, it elevates your frequency and your energy, and that's how we co-create. So we either co-create madness and hatred and violence frequency, or we co-create that which is aligned with Creator, uh, Mother, Father, which I believe is is a love frequency, a joy frequency. And how I feel that is is because I look around at creation. I Agreed. look at I look at what is around us. I look at this magnificent Mother Earth and all the amazing beauty and then go deeper and take it to the numbers, take it to the pie, take it to the Fibonacci theories of numbers, how everything, even ourselves, is made up of identical numbers. It, it, it comes into being the same energetically uh, in, the, in that sacred numbers, everything. And 
the ancients knew that and they, they built the pyramids, they built all of the temples and all of the monolithic structures to be in alignment with these same frequencies. Why did they do that? Why would they do that? I feel it's to raise the frequency. When you activate something, uh, a stone or an instrument, an element, and we are elements, we are an instrument, each one of us is an instrument, and how do you raise the frequency of, of a particular crystalline stone? How do you raise the frequency of a temple or a pyramid? How do you raise the frequency of yourself? This is what we're talking about. This is ancient wisdom. It's alchemy. And uh, guess what? The dark ones, uh, the cabal and whatever, they know this. They know this stuff. And they are using these frequencies to affect us all. Okay, uh, I do have one thing that, that I, you know, we we know that there is evil and there is good, no matter how you wish to de- define it, uh, positive, negative, uh, good, evil, um, bad, you know, it doesn't matter. The thing is, is we are all, we all come from one source, as you said, uh, therefore, uh, that source would have to either contain both positive and negative, uh, hate and love, um, good and evil, or uh, that would be something that can only be manifested in the physical world, right? Well, I agree. I think that, that uh, there's positive and negative as part of creation, but we also have free will. <clears throat> now, the dark is a teacher, but the dark is one thing compared to evil. It's entirely different. When you say the dark, okay, we all have we all have the capacity to be evil too. We all have the capacity to choose. But the dark is a teacher. Now when we say, for instance, you use the term the dark night of the soul, you've heard that term. Um, it's a, it's a state that we move into oftentimes on our journey in life that is a great teacher. But it is up to us to um, to reach, to seek out the teaching within every experience, whether it's traumatic or, or a dark night of the soul. The dark night of the soul is a powerful time where we are really put in a place where we are lost, where we feel completely lost and alone. And uh, what brings you out of that state is your faith. What brings you out is the light. And the light is ever present, you know, the, the light vibrations from the source, the divine source, creator, mother, father, I feel, are ever present and constantly, you know, emanating these photon waves of light and energy, okay? Everything is constantly emanating a frequency, you know, everything of nature is in harmony. Humans are the only one. Only species that that move fluctuate between you know a high frequency and low frequency according to our emotions. Trees don't have emotions on that level. Um, they hold a state of frequency and what I call their job. You know they do feel, <clears throat> and yes, they can get traumatized. But their original essence is to hold this particular frequency. Uh, we also have an original essence. Okay. We were born with an original essence, <clears throat> which is our innocence, which is our sacredness, which is our divinity, that is our joy, our wonder as a child, our creativity without fear or shame, our whole self as complete and knowing, okay? But we were given free will where we can be manipulated or get lost, so when you have the dark night of the soul, <clears throat> it's part of your journey where you go into the dark place, but then eventually something happens to us. Most often when people are falling down and they are in the worst place, that's when they turn to God. <clears throat> yeah, and that's true. You know, the point is, is that our relationship, our spiritual relationship with Creator, God, Wankan Tanka, Yahweh, whatever you want to say, is so crucial because that raises our frequency. That's where we find our hope. We come back to that place of, of hope. And uh, then we lift out of the dark uh, night of the soul. And we reach for that 
when we're in the worst place. Most people wait until they are in that dark, dark place before they, they reach up and they say, God, I need your help or help me uh, or just the words help me usually stems from they're talking to a higher source uh, when people get to that place. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I want this is amazing what happened to Mother Teresa. Uh, everybody pretty much knows her. But I found, I uh, was reading an article about her years ago, that she went through pretty much 50-some years of being uh, in the what, she, what was called the dark night of the soul. After she received her vision, many years of the vision that Jesus, Yeshua, was speaking to her to leave the convent and go out into the streets to help the lepers and the people, um, it took her years to for the... Um, authorities in the church to agree for her to do this once she got the okay to do this and she started her her um, her venture out to help the people she wrote letters to her um, confessors the nuns have to have a confessor which is a male which is a priest or a monsignor and her letters were supposed to be um destroyed she made that very specific in these letters to destroy these letters no one is to read them um <clears throat> and throughout 50 years after she started on her uh her venture to fulfill her vision that yeshua asked her to do to help the lepers and so on she said that she no longer ha- had any connection that jesus left her that she was in the dark and she was devastated. She was having a dark night of the soul, but it lasted for 50 years and nobody knew this about her. So what that said to me was meant this woman had faith, even though she was a, what she said, she was abandoned and devastated and in the dark with such deep sorrow. She continued on with the vision and the, you know, what, that was given to her to help the people. And and no one knew this, but some of the letters were saved, and then there was a book, um, this was actually in Time magazine, and a book was written of these letters. It was very amazing to me, because I was having one of my own dark night of the souls at that particular period of time, and uh, so reading her story just touched me, and helped me to understand the power of faith, that even if you are in the darkest, darkest place of your life, if you have that little drop, it only takes a little drop of faith, you can move through uh, and eventually the light will come. For her, it came on her deathbed when all the lights throughout whole whole of India, all the generators went out, all the lights went out, the cities completely in India became dark. Um, I guess that was sort of uh, some message uh, in relation to the impact and power of what Mother Teresa did on the earth to help people. So, talking about Dark Night of the Soul. If you think about now knowing the story about her and uh, how how she lived her life for all those 50 years, but inside of herself, she was al- alone, she said, and lonely and uh, abandoned. And faith was enormous, enormous. She had that peace, even though her emotions, she was devastated and felt she was abandoned, and uh, that, but still she had that other peace. Well, I think that, that um, some very good points, and, and I do agree that uh, the energy of creation is what we are and where we come from. Uh, I do know that uh, energy and frequency are what brings change um, and that we are the creators of energy and frequency here in this existence, in this experience and uh, we have the power we, we truly do not have any idea how great we can be uh, what we can accomplish because we've never ever actually tried but we can look back through history uh, when when we see things that, that seem miraculous that were done uh, and we know that it is possible uh, if you have the faith of a grain of mustard seed 
one that's my favorite of favorites out of the Bible because it says everything to me um, if you have that faith uh, you know that's what you need but anyway it's been a good show I was yes, just reading it has the chat been. <laughs> um, Holy Walker, are you going to say anything? You want to type something well, in? There, you go. Ooh, <laughs> there, there he is. is. Yay. I, I was going to say, man, to, uh, applause, ladies. I'm uh, just awesome to uh, listen to you to speak today. Uh, that's one of the reasons they call me the resident lurker because, you know, I'm. I, I, I love to hear the words of wisdom and understanding uh, and compassion that uh, you ladies have to share with us. And, and today's been a really, really good one. Um, a lot of people agree with me, I know, because they've told me so. <laughs> well, I'm so glad that you got to speak, and we like to hear you speak too, Holy Walker. Absolutely. I know you like being the resident uh, lurker, but <laughs> you're so good when you do speak. And now we're out of time. We got two minutes. Oh you no! Know? But you know, it's all good. We, we'll we'll live. Uh, we'll learn. Hopefully, we'll be heard another day. Yeah. Well, for me, before we go, I just want to say that obviously, for me, faith and trust in Creator, Mother, Father, and the great. Um, greatness and amazing beauty and mystery of everything is a key piece uh, and uh, yeah just to to offer that to people don't lose hope and uh, no matter what's happening in your life um, as there's lots of things that you can turn to that will help you and one of them is of course uh, creator indeed and with that being said, we are at the uh, 30-second mark. Please, everyone, we'll have a little bit of music, then be joined by Gerald Whitehorse standing. Uh, please